Got a lot on my mind, I'm thinking I'm needing a break to clear up the club the dang man. Can I get a minute? Cause it's space, man. You've been in my head playing games, man. Give me way to control it. Got me feeling like I can't breathe. I can't even hang with the homie. Ain't no reason not to trust me. I'm your lady, not a slave. You my nigga, and I'm a master. I'll escape thinking who can I run to. Got me looking for a new dude with a chill vibe or a nice time. Who can lay back? Who don't pick fights? Who ain't insecure? I'm laughing, I'm dancing, on tables wearing sunglasses, fantastic, yeah, I'm killing it. I'm faded, I'm taking more shots, tequila and Jameson, I'm famous, yeah, I'm killing it. It's 3 a.m., still going strong, not going home, no. Look at me. been acting different, yeah. Funny how I finally flipped the script on ya. Yeah. And you the one who's double dipping, yeah. You so sloppy how I caught you slipping, up. Uh. You're off the lease. Run me my keys. No more popping up the idiot. I ain't even got the miles to trip on ya. Yeah. No phone. Who is this? Brand new. Like the whip. Rack it up. No assist. Maybe giant. Can't be mad for so long. No need I'm never doing no wrong. Pieces now it's torn. I swear that my heart, it probably need bandages. No, I can't do nothing with a little ghost. I had to go and just give me a fan of it. She said, I'm hot like a motherfucking candlestick. Don't need the light up, check it, the candle lit. When you get money, don't even know what family is. I am so famous, don't look with the camera is. Hate when they always take pictures of me. Paparazzi always following me. I'm giving motivation to my niggas that's locked down. Watch me. Turbo. How to be mess. Yeah. Running on rest. Yeah. I know they niggas ain't talking to me. I don't give a reaction. I just be keeping that Glock on my hip and I wear it for fashion. I really be ballin' and poppin' that shit like I do on my caps. I just be messy, runnin' on racks. I know they niggas ain't talkin' to me, I don't give a reaction. I just be keeping that Glock on my hip and I wear it for fashion. I really be ballin' and poppin' that shit like I do on my caps. Yeah, niggas be playin', yeah. Industry games, yeah. Rappin', but they not in love with it. Think it's a shame, yeah. I'm about to pop on some other shit. Think it's a game. They don't control where I land. Royal flush to get the cards in my hand. I'm trying to stack all these M's. All of my idols is friends. Came to the fight with some Tim's. Will I lit up? It depends. Come through the struggle. I don't run from trouble. No breaking. I just want to win. I just want to be defeated. I'm hella conceited. I write on that beat like a band.
Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to today's alumni speaker assembly featuring Ben Thomas, GFS class of 2014. Before I officially introduce Ben, I'd like to begin with a few shared moments of silence. Thank you. Welcome again to the 2017, excuse me, 17th annual, 2020 17th annual GFS Alumni Speaker Assembly. This yearly event is an opportunity to highlight our alumni, an amazing group of over 5,000 strong, making an impact around the world. For many alumni, their connection to GFS doesn't end with graduation. Some return to campus as teachers, staff, or coaches, and some as parents, guardians, or mentors. And some like today's speaker return to offer their gift of time and expertise with younger generations of GFS students. One of the greatest gifts that alumni can share is their experience. Alumni take with them into the world a wealth of talent and skills. And in return, they gain new perspective and insight by what the world teaches them in the years following graduation. We hope that by creating opportunities for our students to connect with alumni, you will benefit from hearing their stories as you contemplate your own life journey. Today's assembly is one such opportunity. Our speaker today, Ben Thomas, is like family to me. A Grammy-nominated engineer and producer, Ben entered GFS in the ninth grade after moving from New York. The previous summer, while attending GFS camps, Ben quickly became a community favorite with his kindness, athletic ability, and warm personality. Throughout his four years on campus, Ben took advantage of nearly all that GFS had to offer. A few highlights include captain of the varsity basketball team, leader of the base affinity group, and the go-to person for all things sound or tech related when it came to events and productions in Loeb Auditorium. After GFS, he passed up an opportunity to return to New York and attend NYU, choosing instead to stay in Philly and attend Temple University. He graduated from Temple in 2018 with a degree in entrepreneurial studies and innovation management. While still in college in 2017, then had the opportunity to engineer Insecure, a song featuring Jasmine Sullivan and Bryson Tiller, as well as work on Brian McKnight's album, Genesis. This work earned Ben three NAACP Image and Soul Train Award nominations. Since then, Ben has had the opportunity to work with artists including Lil Uzi Vert, Post Malone, Ty Dolla Sign, Lil Dicky, Meek Mill, and many others. This year, Ben opened his first commercial studio space called After Five Studios. He earned his first Billboard number one with his work on the Pluto and Baby Pluto album for Lil Uzi Vert and Future. He also received his first Grammy nomination this year for Best Country Album for his work on Ladylike, the debut album by Ingrid Andress. He is also co-owner of Nice Things Music, an independent record label and management company. Without further ado, I turn it over to my man, Ben Thomas. Thank you, Brandon. Um, <laughs> that was that was great. Um, maybe not the athletic ability part, but it's okay. Um, yeah, so like Brandon said, my name's Ben. Um, graduated from GFS in 2014. So I went there just for high school. Um, I, I grew up in New York with my mom. And then we moved to New York um, in 2009. I went to a small Catholic school for a year. And then after that, um, I looked around at all the schools in the area. Um, and I really felt like GFS was the one that connected with me the most. Um, I, I remember I, I came to visit in the summer and um, I met Brandon there and he was telling me about the, the summer basketball camp. And, and that was something that was really passionate for me. It was like, I, I wanted to continue to have the opportunity to play basketball. And he kind of assured me that I would at least get an opportunity to try out for the team. And I was sold on GFS at that point. Um, yeah, so, you know, when I, when I was at GFS, I really, really felt connected to the community. Um, 
and I felt that I could really make an impact and I could um, become really involved. And so I, from day one, just kind of jumped in head first. Uh, I joined the tech theater group and started doing sound for the assemblies and plays and whatnot. Um, I got really into coffee house um, and, you know, helped, helped run that for a couple years. We actually, I remember it was, uh, it was I think it was the spring of 2013 um, and it was right around alumni weekend. And you know how they have them, those like big tents that they use for alumni weekend. We, uh, we convinced them to let us, let us borrow one of those for, um, for a coffee house. So we actually had coffee house outside, like in the court by, um, our that was, that was one of my favorite memories, um, from GFS and then, you know, playing basketball for four years. That's how I made a lot of really, really close friends. Um, I'm still, I'm still really close with some of my teammates, um, Jamil and Jalil both teach at GFS right now. And I remember when they shadowed me to come to the school and stuff. Um, I was a little upset that the team the next year without me, uh, went to, went to the championship, but it's okay. I went and, and rooted along all the homies and everything. Um, and then, you know, with, with base, it, it was only right for me to be involved. Um, you know, I, I had come from a similar type of school in New York, but it was significantly less um, diverse than GFS. From when I was a kid, um, there was a couple years there where I was the only student of color in my in my whole grade at a school of similar size in New York. Um, so when I came to GFS and there was a group like base, it, I felt really connected and I had to get involved because it was, you know, I, I don't have any siblings. Um, so it was really the first chance for me to really develop those lifelong bonds um, with other with other guys that look like me and I were kind of in the same age range as me and I still talk to um, some of the, I still talk to some of the guys that are younger than me and that are older than me and everything. So GFS was incredibly um, critical for my, for my life and my career um, and just, you know, making me into the person that I am today. And that's why I'm so overly excited to, um, to get involved. I mean, the, one of the first uh, recording gigs I ever got was when Alan asked me to record acapella fest when I was in 10th grade. And I think I did that for the three years after that and then for three more years after I graduated. I think last year was the first year that I didn't do it. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kinda talk about me a little bit, just kinda give a rundown of you know what I've done since I left GFS, talk a little bit about my career. I'm going to show, um, I'm gonna show some video of my studio and then I'm also going to uh, demo a song that I just recently released with an artist from Philly named Chill Moody. Um, it's a song that I produced, and recorded, and mixed, and mastered, and it actually, um, excuse me, the song was picked up and it's in uh, NBA 2K21. So if anybody plays, this song is in the game. Um, so I kind of wanted to show everyone what that looks like. Um, there's a point where I'd be like, is that cool? But there's, there's no audience. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so after I graduated GFS, I had a really um, critical decision my senior year. Um, my whole time there, I, especially uh, 11th grade, 12th grade, I wanted to go to NYU. That was my dream. Um, I had a friend of mine named Nick who went to NYU, and he was in their Clive Davis School of Recording Music, which is like their modern music program. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. I had my heart set on going to NYU. So I applied early, um, and I, I was accepted, but I wasn't accepted into the music program. Um, but I was accepted with a, a fairly sizable scholarship. But if anybody knows, NYU is very expensive. Um, and so even with the, the scholarship that I was provided with, I'd still be looking at about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a year um, out of pocket. Um, compared to Temple at the time where I was, I was accepted with pretty much a, a full scholarship at that point. And, um, you know, I, I weighed the options and, you know, my, my mother's done a, a lot to provide for me over my, my whole life. She's made a, a ton of sacrifices um, to make sure that I always had the best opportunities, that I could go to the best schools. You know, it's just me and her. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't make that decision um, right there. I, I couldn't make the decision to put both me and her into, um, you know, a, a, a difficult financial situation, even if that was my dream, where Temple was there and it was available and it was a great school. Um, and it, it, it would have not really cost me anything and so in that moment i decided um on like it was on the day that you have to make the decision i decided that i was going to go to temple which in hindsight ha was one of the most um important decisions for my career so went to temple i didn't study music i studied um, entrepreneurship and innovation management 
So I was in business school, um, and I don't even really remember why I picked entrepreneurship. I think I started off with like marketing, and I went to um, the first meeting of the Entrepreneurship Students Association, and uh, one of the students there, he was like, "You should switch to entrepreneurship." I was like, "All right, cool, I'm gonna switch." Um, and it was it was a great decision. Um, I really developed some some deep relationships in um, the entrepreneurship community at Temple, and it's helped provide for different opportunities because. The entertainment business is it's a relationships game it's who you know it's not so much about what you know it's who do you know and how can they um how can they help you um so there to back up just a little bit um my junior project so i wanted to do something music related for my junior project around this time i kind of knew that i i kind of wanted to lean towards music i had i had an experience when i was in ninth grade um where i had a friend his name is kenny Kenny Green, um, and he wanted to rap. And he wanted to he wanted to start rapping, and he was like, "Can you record my raps?" Because he knew I kind of knew a little bit about that kind of stuff. I was like, "Yeah, let's record these raps." So I, I took the the microphone from Rock Band, the video game, and my laptop, and we went to our math teacher at the time's classroom. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first classroom when you come upstairs on Hargroves on the second floor in the corner. So we were in that classroom. Um, during lunch, uh, for about a week, he let us use the room, and I set up my microphone, and, and we recorded in GarageBand, and it was really bad, but it it really sparked that first interest in me. So from there, I was kind of dibble dibble dabbling around in music, and then eleventh uh, grade, um, I was I played a bunch of instruments, but I, mostly I played bass. I was in jazz band, and um, Jeff at the time, the uh, jazz band teacher, he recommended me for this um, this program called Grammy Camp. And so Grammy Camp was uh, a summer camp run by the Recording Academy. And it was pretty much for students across the country to come, spend two weeks in a recording studio, learn about it, see if this is something they might want to do. So I went, it was in New York, um, it was at this really awesome recording studio run by Converse, like a sneaker company. Um, and so they, they gave us a bunch of free sneakers and stuff, but it really it, it really sparked my interest in being an engineer. And so for everybody, everybody that doesn't know, I'm a engineer. My job is to record the songs, edit the songs, make sure they sound good, you know, sit in the fancy studio with all the knobs and twist them and everything like that. But it's also to keep track of the files and, and manage them and just kind of make sure that what the artists and the producers and the songwriters want you to hear is what you hear. Um, and so this was my first time really being introduced to that. So when I came back, um, to when I came back home, this is the summer between um, junior and senior year. Um, I convinced my mom to let me turn her basement in Mount Airy into a studio. And so with one of her friends, uh, who was a contractor at the time, we built a recording studio in the basement. And it was mostly like a, a vocal booth, which was just a closet with window in it. And uh, I just started bringing people over, friends, people from the community, people that I met on, on the internet. Uh, and we just started recording songs, and, and most of them were pretty bad. But I, I've developed some relationships back then that I, I still carry forward. But um, with my junior project, I, I didn't have the opportunity to do something music-related because I was playing basketball at the time. And as you know, you have to come back to campus every day. So Brandon, um, before he worked at GFS, he used to work at the Stock Exchange here in Philly. And so he recommended me to his former boss to do a junior project there. So I did it. Um, and it, it put a different love in, in my mind of finance and business, and I wanted to work on Wall Street and stuff. So for the whole time that I was in college, I was balancing these two things of, do I want to be an engineer and do I want to pursue my music dreams, or do I want to go the more traditional route? And so while even while I was in college, um, I was interning at different studios and kind of running my own out of my apartment, but I was also working um, as a data analyst at a wealth management company and trying to balance what that looks like. Um, but I ended up going down, down the music path. So when I was in college, um, around the beginning, the second semester of my freshman year, which is, is 2015, um, I was presented with a bunch of opportunities that that kind of shaped up to where I'm where I'm at right now. Um, the first one was I met uh, Chill Moody, who's my best friend and business partner, and uh, one of the first people to really believe in me. And so we started working together. He would come over because um, I was living at home while I was going to college. Um, and so he would come over and we would record and then, you know, he took me to South by Southwest in Texas for the first time and really introduced me to tons of people that kind of um, pushed my career forward. So he was very instrumental in that. I also connected um, with these two guys uh, named Will Toms and Dave Silver. They were just um, nominated for the Forbes 30 Under 30 a couple days ago, but 
they have a company in Philadelphia called Rec Philly. Um, it's like a music industry incubator, pretty much. It's like a, a gym for creatives is the way they describe it. And so I really helped them build their company and I was kind of the main music person. So I um, helped design their recording studios and I helped, um, yeah, I helped design the studios. I helped engineer all the sessions at their studios for a couple years. And it really kind of threw me into the trenches and gave me the opportunity to start working with people from day one. So, you know, 2015, 16, I'm, I'm starting to work with up and coming artists in the city and kind of learning what it means to be an engineer. How do you work with somebody? How do you make them sound good? How do you make them feel comfortable and everything? And then also around that time, I met my mentor, um, a gentleman, his name is Anthony Bell. He's a music producer and a songwriter, engineer. He, uh, he co-wrote a song called Golden by Jill Scott. And he did a bunch of other um, kind of R&B songs, a lot of stuff in the early to mid 2000s, a lot of R&B like that. But uh, he had a studio in Philly at the time um, named Studio Breed. And he gave me the opportunity to intern there. And that was very instrumental for me because most people don't get to intern at recording studios until they're 21, 22 after they graduated. I got my internship at either 18 or 19. So I just had a, a head start to, to the rest of my peers because you know I feel like with what I do and, and kind of with anything, I don't think I'm like exceptionally, an exceptionally talented engineer. I don't think I'm like, I have some natural gift at this. I think I just have done more hours than most people have. And that's kind of how you get good at anything. You just have to consistently practice that and, and have tons of reps over and over. So I was starting to do sessions, you know, at 19, like professional sessions with professional songwriters and artists and whatnot. Um, and I was being thrown into opportunities that I probably was unexper unexperienced for, but I, I just always had a positive attitude. And I was like, all right, we're going to figure this out. And, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, here we go. Um, and that's pretty much what happened. So I, I interned at the studio for a little bit and then... Um, I got a call one day and Ant was like, hey, Ty Dolla Sign wants to come to the studio. Uh, nobody wants to record him. Do you want to record him? And I'm looking at him like, of course, like why are you at, like, don't ask me that as a question. Just get, tell me I'm coming to the studio and recording Ty Dolla Sign. This is like the first famous person I've ever worked with. This is the first, you know, um, big artist that I, I've, I've ever met to that point. And I showed up and, you know, we recorded like five or six songs. And he was incredibly nice and we worked all night long. And it was, uh, it was kind of the end of my internship and the beginning of my employment at Studio Breed, where I worked at until 2019. I, I ended up becoming a senior engineer there for about a year and a half. And then around that same time frame, I also had a similar opportunity with Brian McKnight. And um, I also had the opportunity and mentor Jasmine Sullivan um, from the time she was probably like 14. He's written and produced a bunch of her songs. And he called me one day and he was like, hey, she doesn't want to go to the studio anymore. She wants to work at home. She wants to record herself. Uh, she feels like she's more comfortable in that environment. I bought her speakers and a microphone and computer. Can you set it up and show her how to use it? I was like, like stop asking me. Just tell me to do these things. I'm going to do them. Um, so I go to her house, set everything up, set up the speakers, get the computer working, get the microphone working and everything. She's not paying me any attention. She's getting ready to go out with her friends. I'm just like some 19 year old kid there trying not to be awkward. Um, and I start to show her how to record herself and I kind of just got the feeling that she was not gonna do it. Um, and in that moment I was at a crossroads, right? I could do what I was told and I could just set everything up and leave or I could shoot my shot. And so I did and I said, hey, I'm not really doing anything, which was a lie. I was working um, at the wealth management company. I was interning in the studio and I was a junior in college or sorry, sophomore in college at the time, so school. I was like, I'm not really doing anything. I'm pretty free other than school. Um, if you ever want to record, just call me and I'll come back. And she kind of just brushed it off. And I was like, all right, cool. Didn't think much of it. And then two weeks later, she called me. And this is 2016. And we worked together uh, pretty regularly up until 2019. So I did um, the Insecure single with her and, and Bryson Tiller. I did... Um, I recorded her last single called Lost Ones. And I worked on her most recent single, um, called Pick Up Your Feelings and a bunch of other songs. And it's great to see that some of these songs that we did so long ago are finally starting to come out. So they're really good. I'm happy that people are getting to hear them. Um, and so when the Insecure song came out, that was kind of a very crucial moment for my career because it gave me um, some legitimacy in a lot of people's eyes. And it kind of gave me the opportunity to have something. People were like, oh, what have you worked on? I was like, oh, I've worked on this song that's on this TV show and, and everything. Um, and then from there, it 
you know, it's a relationship game. So things just kept kind of progressing. And then, you know, I worked with some friends and, and one of my friends ended up getting a record deal. And so that really helped push things forward. Um, and then after I graduated, I had accepted a job offer to be a tech consultant at a company called Deloitte in DC because I did an internship there and I really liked it. But I was able to defer the offer for a year. And so I was like, no, sorry, for nine months. I was like, all right, cool. I have nine months to figure this out. So whatever, whatever happens in these nine months is what's going to happen. And I was like, I'm going to keep, um, I moved into a new studio space. So I had kind of set up, it wasn't a, officially a studio. It was kind of just like a really small room that I had my, um, you know, my, my computer and my speakers and everything in. But I, I had a place of my own that wasn't my home where I was able to bring people and we were start, able to start recording and I was able to start kind of working with them. And I was like, all right, I got nine months. I'm going to figure this out. And if it doesn't work, I'm just going to go to the job. And I guess it worked out. And so I told them no. Um, I continued to work with friends and continued to build relationships. And in 2018, continued to sharpen my skills. Um, that, that kind of, those six to nine months after I graduated um, were kind of my my job training. I spent most of that time um, working with Jasmine, working with another friend of mine named Brianna Cash, and working with a friend of mine named Sean Smith. And I would work with the three of them. Like each one of them would get a day and I would just keep rotating and working with them. And it, it was probably the most important thing that's happened um, for me because like I said earlier, it's about how many reps can you put in, how, what can you do to sharpen your skills? And all three of them specifically have been used to working with the top of the top engineers in Philly and around, around the world. So they pushed me and made me better and, and really sharpened my skills by just spending every single day, all day, just locked in, in this little tiny room with no air condition. Um, and it, it, it sharpened my skills because I feel like, you know, we're all waiting for these opportunities to come. And especially when you're young and you're, you're feeling antsy and you're like, when's the next thing going to come? When's the big thing going to come? But you might not have been ready for it. And for me, I know I was, I would, if, if something, if a really big opportunity would have presented itself around that, I wouldn't have been ready. I wouldn't have been ready to capitalize on it, um, without having that kind of incubation period. And so that, that is pretty much, um, kind of what happened, the uh, 2019, similar things uh, towards the end of 2019. Um, actually, towards the middle of 2019, I met my closest professional mentor right now, a guy named Cruz. Um, he is uh, Meek Mill's main engineer. He's been working with Meek for about seven years. And Cruz really turned me into a professional engineer. He took, I had the skills, I was fast on the computer, and I knew how to make people sound good, but I didn't have the, I didn't have the mental understanding of what it meant to work with artists at a high level and, and what it meant to, um, you know, be that person in the room and how to keep them from, how to keep them, uh, how to get the artists to like you and how to make them feel comfortable and, and what to do and what to say and what not to do. And, and by spending a lot of time talking to crews and sitting in on sessions and um, everything that really turned me into a, a professional engineer, not just a kid who was good at using Pro Tools, which is um, the software that I use. And, um, the end of 2019, I decided to move to Los Angeles um, for an opportunity to work with this really uh, great engineer who I had kind of looked up to for a while and I was connected to him and he needed an assistant engineer. And um, so I packed up everything in, in two suitcases and left my studio and left my apartment and left my clients and I caught a flight, went to LA, um, did that for a month. Him and I, unfortunately, our personalities didn't really match up. and. Um, I realized in myself that I wasn't mentally prepared to um, take a step back. I had been so used to being on my own and being kind of the main person. And because I had was given opportunities so young, I was so used to that. I wasn't mentally prepared to take a step back. And you know that that's probably that was probably a flaw of mine at the time. Um, but I'm you know I'm willing to admit that you know we have to talk about the good things and the bad things. Um, and then so after a month, um, unfortunately, you know um, him and I we parted ways. Came back home, <clears throat> didn't really know what I was going to do because I kind of told everybody I was leaving, wasn't coming back. Um, and I kind of just sat around for a little bit. I uh, had the opportunity to go to the Bahamas with, with Cruz, and so that was cool. We did a little work out there. Um, and then in March, I was presented the opportunity to um, start recording pretty regularly um, with Lil Uzi, and that's kind of what I do now. So I've been working with him you know, for most of this year, worked on most of the releases that he's put out this year. We put out a couple solo songs. Did songs with Lil Wayne. We did some <clears throat> did some songs with uh, Lil Tecca. I worked on. I also had the opportunity to, um, as Brandon said, work on the Pluto Baby Pluto album, which was really really cool. Um, and I think 
all of these individual experiences led up to me being able to do that. You know, if I didn't have, if I hadn't met Cruz, I wouldn't have understood what it meant to be a professional and to interact with a super celebrity and to kind of be on their team. But I think everything happens for a reason. Everything happens um, within the right time. Um, and then also this year, I opened my first recording studio, which has been a completely different um, shift because I am, I'm an only child. I grew up with just my mom. I'm a solo to do everything myself. Like if I can't, if some, if I can't figure it out, I'm going to figure it out. That's how, like I needed a website. I didn't know how to make websites. I told myself how to make websites because I don't want to rely on anybody else, um, which is not a good attitude to have. Some, sometimes when you're first getting started, it's good because it, it, it keeps the ball rolling, but you can't be successful without having people around you. And so I didn't intend on opening a recording studio. I intended on just setting up a new space for me to work. The space I was working at before, it was tiny, it didn't have any air conditioning, it just was not a great situation. So I was just looking to set up um, a new place for me to work. And then because of certain situations and me not really being there, the space kind of blossomed from not just a place for me to work, but it blossomed into its own uh, business. And this is my most proud moment is being able to hire four of my friends and being able to pay them regularly and help them get sessions. So while we're waiting for Ben to jump back in, um, he's, uh, he's, uh, there we go. Real quick. All right. Oh, did the connection go out? Yeah, you're all good. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to share my screen and show y'all my studio. So that's my recording studio. Um, it's called After Five Studios, which is the same name as the studio I had in uh, my mom's basement. Because the rule was we only work after five because school, you know. Um, and then when I opened my new space, um, I couldn't think of a better name, so we just kind of brought it back. Uh, the space is it's in Philadelphia, and it's um, you know one of the one or two um, black-owned studios in Philadelphia, which is means a lot to me because a lot of the music here is made um, by black people, and I feel like. We should be ownerships in the in the spaces that we make the music in as well. Um, and as I said, I've been able to hire some of my friends, which has been great. Um, they kind of do it. It's not even my space really anymore. Uh, and we're just kind of, you know, just building a team and, and, and just um, trying to really provide a great place for people to make music and feel comfortable and not kind of feel pressured and wanting to make sure it looked like a very comfortable, very relaxing um, environment. And so that's pretty much it. That's, that's kind of what I do. I make music. I record songs with people. Um, I make beats for people to, to sing and rap over. And I try to manage, uh, manage this studio. So I'm going to share my screen again. And then I'm going to show everybody kind of what a song looks like under the hood. OK. okay. Uh, can can you all see this, Brandon? Yes, yes, good okay, to go. Cool. Perfect. So this song, as I said, is called um, Ayo Take This Ride With Me. Um, it's by Chill Moody, and um, it's in. It's on the soundtrack in uh, NBA 2K21. I'm not a video gamer. I saw somebody playing once, and I heard it, and that was pretty cool. So let me know if y'all, if anybody here plays games. Uh, let me know if you hear it in, in the game, because um, I think this is, you know, it's pretty cool that the song um, made its way into this video game. So... Just to give a quick overview, um, 
of what a song looks like. So it has all these different parts, right? So this orange stuff right here, this is Chill's um, vocal. Um, this purple stuff right here, sorry, it's getting a little slow. This purple stuff right here, these are different kind of cool little effects and stuff that we kind of put on his voice um, just to kind of make it pop and, and, and make what, what, what I call moments. Um, so. One, 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 like one, one, one. Um, and then if we scroll down, I'm very, very uh, diligently organized. I have a, a great assistant who does all of this stuff. So she makes sure it's colored and, and in the right order. So every single song I, I work on looks exactly the same. Um, this yellow stuff right here, this is the main music part, so. This other yellow right here is uh, there's some some vocal samples that kind of play along through the song. And then if we keep going down, um, green is the guitar part because guitar start with G, so it has to be green. Um, my my homie Greg, uh, we sent him the song and. He kind of gave us all these great parts to kind of give it a different feel. And then if we keep going, down here, the red is our bass, and then all of the purple um, is the drums. So let's hear the drums real quick. song is, is, is about chill and uh, some of his friends kind of driving around and whatnot. So I wanted to kind of convey that in the beginning of the song. So got a bunch of sound effects to make it sound like somebody's getting in a car. Keys. This right here gonna be your favorite verse. Had a plan and I made it work. Build a brand, saw the label first. Benny on the boards, Aaron on the art. We do okay with merch. Spags trying to make it chirp. Peep, Philly, Philly, that's the place of birth. You know that. We got tunnel vision. They don't like to see you winning. But there's a bigger picture than little Kodak. Just know that I was woke way before rap. Hove, I ain't throwback. My throwbacks, two and five originated. I had a talk with Big Rube. He said the hymn is sacred. Home of the spitters. I was invigorated since Miss J when he burned down Tigger's basement. Yeah, and that's pretty much how this was. So each one of these parts is done individually and kind of put together. Um, so I remember when I made the beat, I think I probably started with the, the keys and then I added the drums and then um, we added the bass after that and then sent it off, got the guitar. I sent it to Chill. He was like, he because he had asked for a song that kind of sounded like this. Um, and he was like, yeah, this is exactly it. Um, and then he came, he wrote, he usually writes all his raps before he comes to the studio. Um, we did this song in 2017. So he came over to my apartment at the time when I was still in school and um, we kind of recorded this song. And then after that, I went back and kind of organized it like this and made sure each different part sounded good. So like, for instance, this is an equalizer. So let's see, what did we do right here? So, you know, we took out some of the, the lower frequencies to kind of make sure that the higher frequencies kind of shined on that synth part or even on chill, chill's vocals. Um, 
kind of the same thing. Taking out some of the lower frequencies, taking out some of the kind of problem areas. And then from there, you know, I get to go back and um, kind of have some fun and, and make stuff sound cool. So like this spot, for instance, you know, I was able to chop up his, his voice and, and make it sound cool when it comes back in. Just ride with me. Fresh out the gate. This part is, is pretty much just him saying the word fresh in reverse. And then right here, we just have it kind of cut. And it's like going from left to right um, in the headphones. So yeah, this is kind of this is what a, what a song looks like, and you know it's uh, it gets gets broken down like this, and then um, you know my job is to take all these individual parts and, and put them together so that you don't hear any. Of, I don't want you to hear any of these individual parts. I just want you to hear one cohesive song, um, and that's uh, it's pretty much what I do all day. Is I I, I I people either send me their files like this or um, I record them, and um, you know we, we make songs. Yeah. So I think I'm going to pass it back to Brandon if we are going to do some questions. Or... Yeah. Great, Ben. That was amazing. That was amazing. I'm sure if we were in the low auditorium right now, you'd uh, get a standing ovation on that one. So I uh, appreciate you. Um, and also, um, one quick thing. Be, I always assume that everybody in the room knows who I am. Um, so for uh, the few that don't, um, I forgot to introduce myself in the beginning. Brandon Jones, Director of Alumni Relations and class of 2000 um, here at GFS. So um, Ben, that was great. We have a few questions that came through um, and I wanna see if you can uh, tackle a, a couple of those here. Um, one in particular so, is uh, about the software you use. So, so what are you using? What's this platform that yeah. you have in front of us? So this software is called Pro Tools. Um, it is, they, they describe it as the industry standard. Um, it's what every, if you go into a studio um, in the world, you're going to see this. Now, there's other great softwares that you can use to record. There's uh, I make I make my music um, in a song in a software called um, Ableton, um, and you know there's Logic, which is essentially like GarageBand, but on steroids, it's like Apple's. Uh, these these softwares are called D, uh, DAWs, Digital Audio Workstations. Um, the one that I am the most comfortable in, the one that I use regularly, is, is called Pro Tools. Um, yeah. That's great. Um, also, what brand of mic do you use? I know you have a preference there. Yeah, so um, in the video, you saw a microphone made by a company called Slate. Um, it's a what's called a virtual microphone, so it, it has software that allows it to emulate other microphones. Personally, when I record, I use a company called Warm Audio. Um, I'm endorsed by them, so I use, I use their um, products. So um, right now, I've been using their it's a WA47 Junior. I, I'm, not, I'm not the, if you want to talk about gear, I'm not the one. Like I love equipment, but I, it doesn't matter. You know, I've I've recorded, I've recorded hit songs with a three hundred dollar microphone plugged directly into my computer. Like I, I'm not, I don't think that stuff really matters as much as people make it out to be. But I mean, I like it. But uh, I think it's all about: Do you know what you're doing? Can you get a good recording? And is it a good song? And is it good, a good performance? Nice. So Ben, in your studio tour, um, you had um, on top of one of the speakers, a, 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 a jar of Grey Poupon. We had a question that came through that said, why the Grey Poupon? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a running inside joke with some friends. Uh, essentially, um, a couple years ago, I saw a video um, on YouTube um, by Vox Media talking about how Grey Poupon's been mentioned in like over 100 rap songs over the past 30 years. Just like this one you know, random brand of mustard just keeps getting mentioned in all these rap songs. And it was all because there was this commercial back in the 80s where like these two guys would pull up next to each other in Rolls Royces and they like pass the great coupon back and forth. Um, it's like the same thing that Kendrick did in the Humble video, but like it's just, it was, that's what he got the inspiration from. And I just thought that was really cool that they kept mentioning this mustard and kind of just like signified like making it kind of because it's like, oh, you have money, you can eat great coupon, you know, you don't have to eat French's or, you know, it's like, it's fancy, it's a fancier mustard. Um, and so uh, me and a friend of mine named Sean, uh, Sean Smith, we kind of both thought that was really funny. And so we kind of, we bought a jar and just had it sitting there for inspiration when we made his first, we made his first album, which he ended up getting a record deal with Rock Nation from. And it was, you know, really important uh, project for both of us. So ever since then, we just kind of had this jar. I would not open it. It's expired in 2017. Um, and I don't even like mustard, but it's kind of just there uh, kind of for inspiration. 
That's awesome. Um, ben, can you go ahead and um, stop that screen share there so we can um, see a little bit more of you doing this Q&A. Um, some more interesting questions coming through. Um, one from a good friend of ours, Jamil. What musician or person in the industry has made you the most star, star excuse me, star struck? I've honestly never been starstruck. Um, I've, I meet people in a working context. Um, and so I meet them when they're being vulnerable. So there's, there really hasn't been, um, there really hasn't been any feelings of starstruck because I'm, I'm not meeting somebody, you know, real quick and we're gonna take a photo. It's like, I'm meeting them and just looking at them as a normal person because I'm trying to build a relationship with them and I'm trying to get them to be vulnerable so that they'll give their, their, uh, their best performances. That's great. Um, so another question that came through um, about your recording and sound effects and samples. Um, the question is when you record the sound effects like keys, car door slamming, et cetera, are you recording those yourself or downloading from a database? Uh, so most of that stuff is, is downloaded from different websites. I have a, a large sound library that actually, um, let me not get this wrong. So I've had two students uh, do their junior projects with me. Um, and so Gray Palmer did his junior project with me three years ago, I think. And he actually made my sound effects library. That was one of the things I asked him to do. So all those sound effects he found on the internet and just put them on a hard drive for me. So that's kind of, that's where those came from. That's neat, that's neat. Um, what about studio etiquette? What advice do you have for anyone that wants to be in a, a role like you? Um, be, incredibly helpful and just um, willing to do whatever, um, especially if you're young and you're just coming in, you're interning at a studio, just kind of being being seen but not heard, just kind of being there, taking notes, being diligent, doing whatever people ask. You know, I think the, the thing that a lot of um, creatives don't have is the more soft skills that you, know, you get in a more traditional kind of work environment. Um, so being punctual, knowing how to write a, a nice email and being punctual and being punctual and, um, you know, knowing how to kind of interact with people and stuff. I think those are the things that, that really matter. And then just like, you know, don't, don't try to force your music on people. You know, people get kicked out of the studio for that all the time. And, um, just kind of being, being a cool person. A lot of, a lot of people, especially people in what I do, you know, they, they have kind of an ego cause they know that, you know, I know how to use the computer and I know how to take apart all the gear and stuff. And so, um, you know, I think, that causes people just be a nice person to be around honestly that, that, that'll keep you around like just be a nice person to be around that's a good lesson for uh, life in general i'd say um ben here's another one um being a grammy nominated engineer and also a person of color what are your thoughts on the recording academy knowing that a lot of talented black artists were passed over this year yeah so i've the recording i'm very involved um i've been involved from the, with the recording academy since i was 16 17. So I went to their, their high school music camp. I was part of Grammy U, which is their college program. I was the campus ambassador for Temple. Um, I've been a voting member for about three years now. Um, and then I actually was the youngest. Um, so every, there's 12 chapters. There's a chapter in New York and Philly and Miami and LA. And so each chapter has a board um, that kind of you know does programming for that chapter and, and, and um, whatnot. And so I was the youngest um, board member ever. I, I was a board member of the, on the Philly chapter when I was 22. Um, and so, I'm very, very involved. And what I will say is there's there's two things. Um, one, people don't vote and that's the big issue. Up until a year, a year and a half ago, it, the, the criteria to become a voting member was incredibly low. It very, very easy, but people don't vote. And unfortunately, a lot of black artists and producers and musicians don't sign up and don't vote and then are frustrated when the results don't reflect what they look like because they didn't vote. Um, and then I think um, the thing that people have confused about the Grammys and about the recording. The Recording Academy is essentially a trade group slash union for professional musicians. It's not a pop. The, the Grammys are not a popularity contest. It is a contest. It's a, it is a award amongst your peers of what your peers think is the best music, and that does not necessarily mean it's the most commercially viable music. It is what do your peers, other professional working musicians, think is the best quality music, and I think that's where a lot of the disconnect comes from. Um, but I mean, I think this has been a, a, a pretty solid year for black artists and especially for, for women. I mean, every, I think it's the best uh, rock performance. Every nominee is a woman. Um, in one of the country categories, every, every nominee is one. I think that's great. 
Um, I think, you know, there's a, a well-represented um, spectrum of hip-hop. Um, I know there was some contention with the album category, but I, I'm, I'm, I think it's reflective of what was the best quality. And like I said, quality doesn't always equal commercial viability. Um, you know, we have a, a great um, black woman named Chica who's nominated for Best New Artist. I had the opportunity to work on her debut release. Her music is great. Um, so I, I think there's, you know, some solid representation. But I think, you know, with anything that is um, inclusive, or not inclusive, but anything that's exclusive, there's always going to be a lack of people of color. And that's why those of us who can be involved, that's why I'm so involved. Those of us who can be involved have to be involved and we have to vote. We have to make our voices heard. That's great. Um, ben, this one came in from our dear friend, Della Micah. Um, she wants to know, have you ever had a recording disaster, like accidentally deleting a song? And how did you recover from that? Della is, first off, Della is great. And uh, Della was my college advisor and my 10th grade, 9th grade advisor and 10th grader, I think. Um, and, you know, Della was very, very important um, for, for both me and my mother. Many, many a meeting in her office about college and, and everything. Um, recording disasters? Um, not really. Uh, I, actually, yes. Yes. My first session with Ty Dolla Sign did not go that well in the beginning because the computer wouldn't work. And I'm standing there. I'm 19. And he's like, starting to get frustrated. And he's also singing that he's frustrated. So that was kind of weird. He's like, He's singing, like, why is this stuff messed up? Instead of saying, it, it, it was a lot. But we ended up getting it work. I mean, you kind of just have to, um, just got to stay cool and just kind of trouble. You just go down the line, you troubleshoot. Okay, could it be this? Could it be that? Could it be this? Could it be that? All right, cool. Um, and you just got to keep a, uh, keep your head level. And that's why, as I said before, I think it's important to have done. I mean, I, I think I can, I can confidently say that I've probably recorded over a thousand songs. Um, so anything that could go wrong, it's probably already gone wrong. So I kind of know how to fix it. You kind of just stay calm and, and don't freak out and, and you let it happen. In terms of deleting stuff, uh, I take file management and, and the backup of my data very seriously. So, um, thankfully I can say that I've probably lost one or two songs over the past seven years. And that was just cause I deleted them by accident, but for the most part, it hasn't happened. Nice. Well, I think we have, um, time for one more question. So I'm gonna combine three of them here into this. Um, who would you say is the most unique or coolest artist that you'd work with? What artist would you want to work with in the future that you haven't worked with? And is there anybody who really inspires you and, and pushes you to, to keep going? Okay. Um, coolest? Um, I, I'll, I'll give two answers for the coolest. Um, I, I mean, I love working with Uzi. He's one of the nicest humans I've ever met. He's incredibly talented and, and passionate about what he does. And um, just the fact that he can just kind of freestyle everything and doesn't write anything down and just everything you've ever heard, he just kind of says it. It's just, it blows my mind. Um, we have a really solid working relationship. We work, we like to, we work in the same, in the same way, the same styles and stuff. Um, but my favorite stuff that I always work on is working with my friends. Talk, like my friends and watching them, um, watching my friends go from, from just starting to kind of where they are now. So whether that's Chill or uh, Brianna Cash, who, you know, put out her first single um, with Interscope or my homie Sean, who got signed to Rock Nation and, and whatnot, and, or my, my friend Armani, or, uh, you know, one of my really close friends, her name was Deja. She, she passed away last year, but we, we made so much great music together. Th th those things mean the most to me. Um, I, I'm here to make, make music and have fun with my friends. Um, so what was it? It was... Uh, who would I want to work with? I, I never answer that question. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't like to box myself in. You know, if you had told me at 19 I was going to do the theme song for a hit TV show, I would have, I could have never predicted that. And I think if you put your blinders on, like, I have to work with this person, um, then you're going to miss out. I mean, I, I grew up really looking up to, to Kanye before he went crazy. I had the opportunity to work on some stuff. It didn't get released, but like, all right, that, that's fine. I did it. Cool. Um, and then uh, what motivates me? Um... I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a big on motivation. I think that it, this is my job, and so you get up every day and you and you go to work. And I think if you if you get if you try to say, oh, I'm not motivated, or I'm not feeling creative today, or I'm not feeling something, then you're. That's not how great art is made. Great art is made through consistency. Inspiration is if you if you try to base it off inspiration, you're not going to be able to have a sustainable career because it's not going to come that often. So it's just about consistency. I'm going to show up every single day, and I'm going to work every day. Um, I mean, my mother motivates me. I want to make her proud. She's, like I said, she sacrificed so much for me um, that I'm I'm doing this to, to to make her proud and make her feel like it was worth it. Um, 
you know, right now I'm motivated by, you know, the squad I have at the studio, knowing that I have to keep hustling to get sessions in for them and to make sure that the space is, is working and, and running because this is important for them because this is, you know, where they're working and this is, you know, their livelihood. And so that matters the mo that matters to me more than, you know, what I'm doing is, is that they're good. So that those are the things that kind of keep me inspired. But I mean, motivated, but like I said, it's about you guys show up every day and just kind of do it. That's great, Ben. Um, that's a great message to end on here. Um, you've outdone yourself. I really appreciate you giving us this time this morning. I know you're uh, out of state on the road doing work. So I um, appreciate being here with you today. I'm going to hand it over to Matthew Young, who's going to close us out. Thank you, guys. I, I, this has been a, a dream of mine. I've wanted to do this ever since I sat in, in these assemblies. So it's it's amazing to be here. And, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm around. You know, if, if anybody has any questions, please reach out. You know, um, everybody has my... Brandon has all my info, you know, you can find me on the internet, whatever. I'm, I'm here. I'm here to help anybody that needs it, especially, especially GFS people. Well, Ben, it is so great to have you with us. Thank you so much for, for tuning in with us. And I, I know my answer to the question of who would I like to work with um, would really be you. What an inspiring message. And I, I have a feeling you might have some emails coming um, looking into junior project uh, proposals for this year. Um, so keep your eye out for those. Ben, your story is inspiring me for a, a number of reasons. Your community connections and your commitment to community through extracurricular activities at GFS when you were a student here, whether it was coffee house or bass or athletics or a cappella. Um, your courage comes out in your story, your, your courage to leap, to trust your gut, but then to also nurture the, those around you to support you. And then finally, your commitment to practice. So um, practice, 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 and getting feedback. What an inspirational story that is so great for all of us. We thank you for spending time, and we hope everyone has a great weekend, and please come back and join us again soon. Take care, everyone. Got a lot on my mind, I'm thinking I'm needing a break to clear up the club today, man. Can I get a minute? Cause it's space, man. You've been in my head playing games, man. Give me way to control it. Got me feeling like I can't breathe. I can't even hang with the homie. Ain't no reason not to trust me. I'm your lady, not a slave. You my nigga, and I'm a mess, I'll escape. Thinking who can I run to? Got me looking for a new dude with a chill vibe with a nice time. Who can lay back, who don't pick fights, who ain't insecure. I'm laughing, I'm dancing, on tables wearing sunglasses, fantastic, yeah, I'm killing it. I'm faded, I'm taking more shots, tequila and Jameson, I'm famous, yeah, I'm killing it. It's 3 a.m., still going strong. Acting different, yeah. Funny how I finally flipped the script on ya. Yeah. When you the one who's double dipping, yeah. You so sloppy, how I caught you slipping up. Uh. You're off the lease, run me my keys. No more popping up the hitty, yeah. I ain't even got the miles to trip on ya. Yeah. No phone, who is this? Brand new, like the whip, rag it up, no assist. Maybe giant. Can't be right for so long, no need nothing, never doing no wrong. Can't get me out of my zone. Pieces now it's torn. I swear that my heart did probably need bandages. No, I can't do nothing with a little ghost. I had to go and just give me a fan of it. She said I'm hot like a motherfucking candlestick. Don't need the light up, check it the candle lit. When you get money, don't need know what family is. I am so famous, don't look what the camera is. Hate when they always take pictures of me. Paparazzi always following me. I'm giving motivation to my niggas that's locked down. I turn to turbo. I'd be messy. Running on rest. I know they niggas ain't talking to me, I don't give a reaction. I just be keeping that Glock on my hip and I wear it for fashion. I really be ballin' and popping that shit like I do on my caps. I just be messy, running on racks. I know they niggas ain't talking to me, I don't give a reaction. I just be keeping that Glock on my hip and I wear it for fashion. I really be ballin' and popping that shit like I do on my caps. Yeah, yeah. niggas be playing, yeah. Industry games, yeah. Rapping, but they not in love with it. Think it's a shame, yeah. I'm about to pop on some other shit. Think it's a game? They don't control where I land. 
Royal flush to get the cards in my hand. I'm trying to stack all these M's. All of my idols is friends. Came to the fight with some Tim's. Will I lit up? It depends. Came through the struggle. I don't run from trouble. No breaking. I just want to win. I just want to be defeated. I'm hella conceited. I write on that beat like a band. Baby kids, hey, I'm a daddy. I listen to suckers the same way that Ray Ray did. 